Welcome to Startup to Storefront, presented by Aura Bora. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Bernie from Something Sweet. Thanks for joining. For Thank people who you. don't know, what, what's the company do? So we sell a premium frozen brown butter cookie dough. It's pre-portioned, ready to bake. You keep it in your freezer and you can bake up one or more at a time. And it's delicious. I've had all the cookies. Thank you for sending them <laughs> over prior to the show. What made you want to get into this business? What did you see in the market? Mm -hmm. You're a cookie fan. I'm a cookie fan, but yeah. I didn't start a cookie business. What What is it that you mm -hmm. saw and you were like, okay, I think yeah. I can do this better. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a little backstory yeah. kind of about how we started and kind of where we saw the fit. So back in 2021, actually, um, my dad passed away and that I'm was sorry. really the start of something sweet. After he passed, both my mom and I lost our job and our family really oh, wow. went through a lot in a very short amount of time, um, not only just with his death, but just in life yeah, after and that and COVID. and COVID. And so after that, we sat down as a family and we really like took a reflective period on our lives and we're like, you know what, how do we wanna live our lives moving forward? Because that could have been us. We are not promised tomorrow. And it, if we have today to do something, what do we wanna do? My mom always grew up baking an amazing self-taught home baker and she always had frozen dough in her freezer. And so I kind of took a reflective period and honestly, it was just put on my heart that frozen dough. I, I mean, it just like repeated in my head and it was okay. something that I was like, okay, maybe this is something we could do. And I went to the grocery store. I'm a big grocery store girl, I love, just walking the aisles and I was like, wow, there is a gap in the market for a frozen dough that actually tastes like a homemade tasting mm. cookie. Because when you have the frozen dough, you can have that fresh tasting homemade cookie mm -hmm. in a matter of minutes and mm -hmm. it's nice because it's in your freezer. So we grew up with that with mm. my mom always having that in the freezer. And so that really sparked it. And from there, there were so many little God signs that really led us into our business. But that was in September of 2021 by the time we kind of figured everything out. We just went fast and furious and we actually launched on the one year anniversary of my dad's passing. Wow. Um, my mom, sisters and I, and figured out packaging, scaled the recipe and sure. started to hand scoop and you know, drove around in our car with coolers and ice chests and hand delivered. And then by January of 2022, we were shipping nationwide frozen. So your dad passes mm -hmm. and what's the, what's the light bulb or the thing that becomes clear about life mm -hmm. for you and your family. Yeah, I mean, I think that it was one of those things for us where you you have two choices when you're faced with grief. You can let the grief smother you or mm. you can do something with it. And as a family, we um, have a f strong faith foundation and also we've always been really strong as a family in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. And we chose plan B to really put our grief into something bigger than ourselves. My dad was, the best entrepreneurial spirit. Mm. He always wanted us to do something as a family with my mom's baked goods. And my dad and I would oh, always wow. talk about, you know, the different things that we could create or build together. And so everything kind of just hit us all at once. And it was a really a light bulb moment of like, yeah. okay, let's do something with this instead of just letting this grief smother us. And why the name? Does it mean something special to you and the family? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my mom actually, her best friend would always make fun of her because my mom has the biggest sweet tooth and she'd be like, I just need a little something sweet <laughs> always. And she'd do this little hand motion. And it was actually weird before when we were kind of thinking of names, we didn't tell anyone. She actually had a dream that uh, we started a cookie business called Something Sweet wow. and we didn't tell her. Um, and so this was actually weeks after we had already put together a fake logo and, you know, started the process of it. And later to come find out, she had a dream and she was like, I need to tell you, I need to tell you. And so there's been moments like that since we started. Um, That's wild. It's not a coincidence. Yeah. yeah. And so it feels very mission driven yeah. to some extent. Very much. Yeah. Okay. And so when you guys are thinking about launching... Obviously, she's a baker, so she knows the game. Yeah. But like, was it always chocolate chip as the hero product to start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. my dad's favorite cookie was the brown butter chocolate chip cookie. Um, my mom has this red recipe book okay. that she would just tinker with uh, the same recipe. And we were just like, you know, this everything that we have created in this business has meaning. And so mm. we're going to start with his favorite. And it's been our hero since. So. And how did you guys launch? And so obviously mm -hmm. friends and family first, but like yeah. website, how did, yeah. how, give, give us the beginning of the story. So we did everything. Um, my mom, sisters and I each have such a unique, beautiful talent within each of us. Um, and so 
we all kind of just put our heads together and we divided and conquered. We built a website ourselves. We've done everything ourselves thus far, hmm. the website, everything. And so we did have to outsource packaging. They did an amazing sure. job, but it was really, I think naiveness really carries you through in the start of business. It's the best. Um, it's the best. It's it the does. Best. It's and so I, good. And still to this day, I do love a little <laughs> ounce of that uh, naiveness. But I, oh, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. 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 Okay. Keep but, going. God. But everything we've done is between us all. So it's my two sisters, my mom and I, um, that still to this day do everything ourselves. This is the thing I like about entrepreneurship where it's like, I, I explain this a lot in real estate development. Mm-hmm. It's like the first time you go up Everest, let's say, like you don't know anything. No. And so you're just trucking along and everything's new. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're naive enough to believe you can do it. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. The second time you do it, you're like, why am I here? Yeah. And yeah. The third time you're like, I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I need yeah. to get off this mountain. Yeah. You know, and, and totally. it's really interesting. And so I think for all entrepreneurs or people mm-hmm. that want to start something, yeah. just do it. You have to just do it. your first time is going to be the best time. Yeah. Because you won't know anything. And yeah. it'll it'll feel pain-free, mm-hmm. shockingly. Yes. Like yeah. I'm doing it for the third, the, the building we're doing. And I'm like... Yeah. This is so painful. Why don't I remember the pain? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I think the fourth time I do it or the fifth time, it's going to mm-hmm. be a little different. I'll say, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember the pain a little mm-hmm. bit more. But it becomes a muscle. It becomes a muscle. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And everything, my motto is everything is figure outable. Like mm-hmm. there is a solution to everything that you face. And being an entrepreneur, there's fire after fire after fire after fire. Mm-hmm. But you learn to have that <laughs> skill of like, how to handle it. And there's always a solution. There's literally always a solution. It's the resilience. Yeah. Yeah. You build this muscle of resilience where the Mm -hmm. way I explain it presently to my girlfriend is like bad news. My body, my mind has a way of just jumping over the emotion. Yeah. And it just goes right into how do we solve it? And it's a really chill thing now, but Mm -hmm. it's really natural. Yeah. Which is nice. Totally. It caught her off guard. She had had never seen that before. She's (laughs) like, you don't even want to be upset about this. And I was like, no, like no. there's no value to it. Mm-hmm. I was like, we're good. We yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. And it was pretty well. She's like, oh my learn. God. And I was like, yeah. I was like, that's the entrepreneur. That's how you know I'm yeah. scarred. Yeah. That, those are the scars <laughs> that you're seeing exactly. problem solve. Exactly. Where did you guys launch first? So we launched locally. We just literally posted on Nextdoor, Facebook, texted friends and family, wow. and literally drove around all and our How did you area. price it? How did you guys decide to price it? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of hard because sure. the industry in and of itself is still smaller, you know, just competitive research and also just figuring out, you know, margin wise for us what that looks like to mm-hmm. be healthy and to be smart. So really a lot of different factors in that. How much is it? So for each of these bags, the these are our newer ones actually. So okay. they retail roughly about fourteen ninety nine to fifteen forty nine. Okay, and yeah. there's like twelve cookies inside. So there's eight cookies. Eight cookies. Yeah, yeah. I ate them all. Yeah, <laughs> way too fast. They're so they're, they're that so good. good. And they're so, so what's good. the plan? How do you think mm-hmm. about? So you're now you're in the CPG business. Yeah. Not an easy business. Mm-mm. What has it been like talking to retailers? Are you guys yeah. going to be on Amazon? Does Amazon do Frozen? They do. They do. But it's man, tough. that would be, yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough one. Okay. But definitely doable. Definitely in the future for okay. sure. Okay. I mean, for us right now, I think our, our tactic has been just growing where we're planted mm-hmm. and doing a really good Smart. job of that. We have done over a hundred demos ourselves just in the last year wow. and counting and mm-hmm. counting. And it's really just learning our customer, educating our customer on what we offer, what we bring, and getting our cookies into people's hands and into people's mouths. Mm. That's really been our biggest thing. Is And we don't want to get too big for our britches because we have talked to so many founders yeah. that if you grow too quickly, it's the kiss of death. Yes. So. I think that's the one thing I've seen in CPG especially be successful. Mm-hmm. I think during COVID, a lot, or prior to COVID, a lot of companies were doing that. They were yeah. just going ham and the funding was mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And then it was emergency board meeting after emergency board meeting. And now it's yeah. like CPG brands are really mm-hmm. having to focus on profit yeah. instead of scaling. Yep. And I think yeah. that still continues to be true. I think, I think mm-hmm. that's a natural correction in the market. I think the mm-hmm. fundamentals are always going to win. Yeah. And unfortunately, it means going slow, unfortunately, in air quotes, going mm-hmm. slower. Yeah. Because everyone wants like the Forbes article about right. the $50 million raise, but exactly. it's not always yeah. the best. When you guys think yeah. about the business, so here we are, Q4, mm-hmm. 2024, next yeah. year, what's on the horizon for next yeah. year, funding, mm-hmm. like how, how yeah. are you guys thinking about all that? Next year is definitely going to be a big year for us. I mean, we have really been in the, in the mindset of really having a strong foundation, both with margin, finances, just making sure that everything Mm -hmm. is so strong before we take a next leap into a next level of growth. And Mm -hmm. a next level of growth for us, 
is more retail expansion, Mm -hmm. um, you know, setting ourselves up for that, but also doing it at a pace that we feel comfortable to support it with demos and with finance uh, of investment rounds and all of that. So our motto has always been, it's a marathon, not a race. We Mm -hmm. want to be Mm -hmm. around for a long time. So if it takes a little bit slower, then so be it. But we're growing where we're planted and we're taking all those different opportunities of growth, but at a strategic pace. Will you guys add SKUs or different flavors? Yeah. Oh, tell me. So right now you have two. Give people a window into the flavors you have and then what's coming. Yeah. So we have two flavors right now. It's our brown butter chocolate chip cookie and then our brown butter snickerdoodle. My mom is a mastermind, so she's been in the kitchen constantly trying new things. I think our approach has always been giving a kind of elevated spin off of classic flavors, starting out there, because there's amazing companies. Peanut butter is my favorite, just so if that's coming down the pipe. I will tell Mama Cook that one. (laughs) We've definitely gone on a lot of peanut butter. Oatmeal raisin is also another one. Another banger. That people love. But Mama Cook has been in the kitchen and... Testing. So. Then you can do fun stuff like Christmas cookies, I guess, mm-hmm. too. That's always yeah. a holiday favorite. Or just like yeah. seasonality, mm-hmm. Easter cookies, all sorts of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's so exciting because the possibilities are endless. We have a big vision for what we're building, and we're so excited to bring people along. I have yeah. to ask the question. So mm-hmm. Shark Tank, will you go yeah. on Shark Tank? Or are you out on the process? Are they knocking yeah. at your door? Is it too early? <laughs> if, yeah. if you were invited, would you yeah. go on? Is it too early? Where do you feel like your business is? You know, we definitely tried in the past. And I think that I'm a firm believer in that everything really does happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. We're open to all opportunities. And if they came to us today, we would explore the opportunity for sure. Okay, so let's play this out. So you get yeah. on Shark Tank. They say, hey, all right, come on the tank. And then... Who would be your dream shark to land? Oh, that, We're just gonna put yeah, it out there in the world because yeah. you never, you might, we might revisit yeah. this video true, later true. in life. This might be like a stitch video. This might be a stitch. <laughs> so who, who would you get? Yeah. Who's in the room and and mm-hmm. just go nuts with it? Let's pretend there's yeah. a guest shark. Oh, I don't know who that a would be. A guest shark. Uh, I love Jamie. Uh, she created it cosmetics and she was on okay. this last season or this upcoming season. I love her. Okay. Barbara is always my favorite. Okay. Okay. I love the way she supports founders, at least from what I've seen. Big time. Um, Big time. You, yeah. What you see is what you get with yeah. Barbara from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Which I love that. And we are a woman owned company. And so seeing Barbara support in that way and and also Candice, the, uh, the founder of Sprinkle Cupcakes, mm-hmm. she was a guest shark as well. I mean, gosh, any anyone, we'd be so grateful for that partnership. What's some of the feedback you're getting from the mm-hmm. freezer section in general? Because yeah. I feel like the freezer section had this renaissance during mm-hmm. COVID. Yeah. Where before it was like, no, mm-hmm. it was kind of forgotten, especially if you were yeah. in your 20s, let's right. say. Like young kids don't really do that. Parents, yeah. sure. Yeah. But now it's like everyone mm-hmm. reinvented or got reacquainted with the freezer. Yeah. And so what's the mm-hmm. feedback you're getting from retailers or these mm-hmm. conversations you're having yeah. on cookies in the freezer. Yeah. I mean, people are so excited. I mean, the feedback from customer after customer after customer, they love our taste of our cookies, but they love the convenience of it. They mm-hmm. love that it can be in the freezer. And for us, we don't have artificial oils, preservatives, or ingredients in our cookies. And it eases a lot of people's minds. And it's an easy, convenient dessert that you just keep in your freezer. Yeah. They love the convenience of just making one cookie. Or if they have friends over, they want a good quality tasting treat but they don't have the time to whip it up themselves, then they have that in their freezer at all times. Yeah. And in terms of like the retailers, I mean, we have shown and proven out we are surpassing a lot of odds in our retail doors. And you know, you mean velocity wise or? Yeah, but that comes okay. with a lot of hard work that we've totally. done and continue to do just to create that awareness in the freezer section. It's my hack. I was at a party mm-hmm. and I, I think I made like six of them yeah. and brought them. Yeah. I didn't know what to bring to the party. Right. And I was like, right. oh, I got, the, I got cookies. Yeah. It so makes it so just convenient. And, and I, think, I told everyone I made them. Yeah. So <laughs> See? Hey, you, you can, can take your the credit. <laughs> we always say you I can be like, them, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be like a Martha Stewart and take the credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Because so, that's, yeah. And someone's like, oh, what's in them? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like I I'm not really <laughs> sure. What, what is the brown butter? Mm-hmm. What, what is, you keep mentioning that. Yeah. What's the secret to the brown butter? Yeah. So brown butter is liquid gold. It is butter that's cooked down okay. past the point of ghee and that milk solids caramelize at the bottom of mm. like the ghee. So it separates. Mm. And that's what gives it this like nutty caramel taste to it and really makes it pop. But I have to say, all brown butter is not created equal. We okay. have had other brown butter cookies, and they do not compare. Like it's a little too tart? That what, some, how does it sour? Yeah. No, it's 
Sometimes, depending on the recipe, well, they will do, because it cooks down the water. Okay. So some will add butter back into it. So it dilutes the taste of the brown butter. I see. But the way that my mom has these recipes, uh, they elevate the taste of that brown butter. So when you have nice. had our cookies, you taste that flavor punch yeah. of a cookie. It's not just a normal cookie. It's you so true. You really taste that flavor. So. And what round of funding are you guys in now? Mm -hmm. Are you guys so, raising like a seed round? Yeah. So we did a pre-seed, a okay. small one, and then now we're in seed. Yeah. And how's that going? It's a whole nother world, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. It is. I've become... Uh, a whole different woman in uh, this stage of our business, just learning the lingo. Yeah. But it's been really amazing meeting people um, in this space yeah. through all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you're finding it like people mm -hmm. are willing to hear the story, sit down with you. Yeah. And then they'll ask you questions, the mm -hmm. velocities. Yeah. Yeah. All the tricky questions. All the but tricky questions. we're very transparent and we're very honest about where we're at, what we know, what we don't know. And I think that that's very receptive to the people who we talk to and Big the people time. who have joined us on this journey already in this investment journey. Give people yeah. a window into just the marketing side mm -hmm. of it. And so what does that look like for you? Obviously, yeah. you're a small team, but what do you guys focus on with the little time you have mm -hmm. around yeah. marketing? Or what, I mean, what have you found that works? Yeah. I mean, right now, we've been so grateful. We've had amazing influencers that we've sent to that post post because they love the product. Um, we don't have a budget, unfortunately, for that type of sure. you know paid influencer marketing, but we've been so grateful with that. And their support has helped us with a lot of just brand visibility. A lot of it is organic. Mm -hmm. We actually do every single piece of content ourselves. So my two sisters, nice. Lindsay and Kaylin, there were masterminds behind it. And, um, you know, we all work together and we try to just answer the who, what, when, where, why. We want people to mm. know as soon as they get to our page, who they're buying it from, what it is, and what they can get. So Got it. Yeah. Repeating the founder's story, yeah. which is so critical. Yeah. What else do you want people to know? Yeah. I mean, we're so excited. We're sold in all of our retail locations in Northern California. You can check our website. Um, we do ship nationwide, and we're perfect nice. for holiday gifts, corporate gifts. If you just want to send to a loved one, let them know you're thinking of them. It's Ooh, really a piece good. of our home to our customers. I love that. Yeah. Well, listen, tell people where they can find you, the website, all yeah. the stuff, the Instagram. Yeah. So we're at somethingsweetdough.com and somethingsweetdough on all social media platforms. And we would love for you guys to try our cookies. Love it. Brittany, come back in a year and we'll do this again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.